square and a skyscraper office block. It's an ambitious plan and a controversial one. Those opposed to it say the fight's not over yet. This was the moment that developers London and Edinburgh Trust had waited three years for. The moment Birmingham said yes. Watched by those both for and against the scheme, the 17 councillors at today's meeting voted unanimously for the latest designs, which will mean that in seven years' time, the centre of Birmingham could look something like this. There are still reservations about some of the details, and there'll be another meeting tomorrow. But the main hurdle has been jumped. Not everyone's happy. This man stormed out in disgust. I sat there for an hour and a half, listening carefully to what the councillors were discussing, and it's quite clear to me that they are not listening to what people of Birmingham want and they are making no real modification to the plan. But after another half hour's discussion, planning chairman Frank McLaughlin formally announced the decision at a news conference. I think it's the most uh, tremendous decision that's been arrived and taken today. I believe that this scheme that is going to be completed by 1997 is the tonic that we need in Birmingham. I think it's good news for the City Council and certainly I hope it'll be proved to be good news for the shoppers of the West Midlands. For the developer, it was the end of one long haul and the beginning of another. There'll probably be a public inquiry because of compulsory purchase orders, plus changes to the plan to be thrashed out starting from tomorrow and detailed planning of the skyscraper. But the developers deny that their plan will mean the end of cheap market shopping in Birmingham. Well, it's simply not true because we've gone to great lengths to retain the markets in the scheme from the very start. All the market stallholders will, will have the chance to continue. The markets are controlled by the city. Uh, I believe we are bringing them many more customers than they had before. So far from suffering a downturn in business, they'll be even better off. But those opposed to the scheme have vowed not to give up their fight. This is a very, very big development and it's so important to Birmingham's future. And it's not something you brush off lightly. It's something which has to be considered properly. And we believe that the full council should look at this development. It shouldn't be a decision of 20 people on the planning committee, or 17 as it was today. However, if all goes as the developers plan, work will start in two years' time and eventually provide 6,000 jobs, 3,000 of them new ones. David Chapman, an architect planner, together with Dr. Alan Middleton and four others at Birmingham Polytechnic, had only two weeks to prepare a report for today's meeting with their thoughts about the new development. It will run from Moore Street Station across Digbeth and in front of St. Martin's Church, which will be linked to the city centre by a new pedestrian shopping street, and then be linked into New Street Station and the site of the Rotunda. But what's wrong with the old bullring? Why do planners want to see it go? The problem with the current bullring is that it's cut off from the city centre and New Street by this major road network, which means that pedestrians have to go into rather uh, dank and unpleasant uh, subways to get through to the Bullring site. But it's obvious, just during a short walk round, that shoppers do like the old Bullring. Keep it as it is. Why? Keep it, it's, it is Birmingham, this is, and we want to keep these that the, way. Well, I mean, we're satisfied with what's going on there, like, you know, and well, this is it, so, you know. Frank Ellis has been working on the market for 30 years. He's in no doubt that the new development will destroy it. And the people you see here are the ones they aim to tip out. Push the markets out of it, you push these people out, and you make room for your upper crust type of customer, your carriage type of customer. Those are the ones that LET are selling the city on. There are steps which could be taken to actually bring markets further up into the city centre, and I think the city council will be keen to look at that. Mindful of the new convention centre, is the bull ring really the city centre now? Well the implications of the in international convention centre being built and hopefully the new bull ring being created here is that the city centre will be enlarged and there will be a very important axis between the two developments. In their report David Chapman and his colleagues say it's imperative so as not to disrupt city life too much that any development is phased over a period of time. But this evening, the City Council were given a warning. I think there are very dangerous pitfalls ahead. Uh, I understand why they've taken that decision, but I think it's now very important that in getting the implementation of this scheme through, they break down the scale. Um, because we now know that big is not necessarily better. Uh, and it is possible in large schemes, and it has been done in other cities, it is possible 
to break down the monolithic feeling and to bring it to a human scale by good detailed design. And that, I think, must be Birmingham's priority now. Well, with me now is the uh, chairman of the City's Planning Committee, Councillor Frank McLaughlin. Mr McLaughlin, the message that's coming through fairly loud and clear at the moment is that the shoppers don't want to see any change. Well, that's uh, a selection that you've shown. A straw poll, admittedly. And uh, quite a few have uh, actually indicated to me and to others on the Planning Committee that they'd like to see the ball ring go. They'd obviously like to see the prices that are appertaining in the uh, market area to be retained as they are. But certainly I don't think anybody would want to apologise for what we've got in the bullring area at the moment. What about this business of prices there? Because the market traders say that this is the danger area, that the prices are going to get pushed up, their sort of trade is going to go, and as one gentleman said, they'll only be able to deal with the carriage trade. Well, I don't know who he's referring to in the carriage trade, but uh, as far as we're concerned um, in Birmingham City Council, we actually control the markets and therefore we can control what the rental values on those stalls will be. So far as I'm concerned, um, the markets are the most important feature of the boring area, and I intend uh, to ensure that they're going to carry on as they have done. And might I say, in 1960s, the same arguments that they've used today, they used then. So at least the market traders have at least been consistent. But at least we've got, uh, I mean, one has to say we've got landed with the great concrete bullring. Now, how much consultation has there been? How much do the people of Birmingham really know what they're in for? Well, with this programme, I hope that they're going to learn uh, a little bit more. Could be a bit late but, in the day, though. Well, it, it? indeed, it might be. But uh, I have to tell you that last year, we did have a uh, detailed application come before us, uh, which had got 28 different amendments. And we took the decision to say to the developers, no, this isn't good enough, go away. And we drew up uh, points of principle that we wanted the development to be based on. They've now come back with that. And uh, today, uh, we uh, gave approval to that scheme. Could I say, about the public consultation bit, we've had more public consultation on this than any other application that anybody can remember in Birmingham. But has the message really got through? Have people really responded to it? Well, it's a bit like saying, you know, have you? And you say, yes, I have. And then you say, well, you know, did people turn up? And you say, yes, they did. You know, not a million people turned up, but those that wished to express a view had the opportunity to, in addition to the statutory um, consultation that we have to carry out. So you've done your bit? I believe, I'd like to think we have. Mr McLaughlin, thank you. Thank you. The Bullring has been Birmingham's commercial centre for more than 800 years. Today's decision is just the latest chapter in the history of this ancient market. There's been a church on what was Birmingham's village green since the 11th century. Birmingham itself was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book back in 1086. St Martin's has dominated the market scene that's always surrounded the church. The village green originally used for tethering cattle became a busy and prosperous market. The splendid market hall was officially opened in 1835 with 600 stalls. It was the state-of-the-art covered market of its time with high standards of hygiene. No person shall be allowed to smoke tobacco in the hall under penalty of five shillings for each offence. No person shall be allowed to keep any dog in the hall. No person occupying any stall shall be allowed to wash or clean vegetables after nine o'clock in the morning. The rent was a penny per square foot per day. The market hall was also renowned for its dining rooms. Faggots, mushy peas and mashed potatoes for ninepence or you could really indulge for 11 pence with beef and two veg. Little had changed at the beginning of the 20th century, with lavender sellers selling their sachets at a penny a packet, and fruit and flower sellers at every corner. The market was thronged with people. All roads into the city from London, Coventry and Stratford converged on the bullring. In 1950s, Birmingham's market area was little changed, and it wasn't until the end of the 50s and the beginning of the 60s 
that the major demolition began. The walls of the old market hall were pulled down and the rotunda began to take shape. In 1964, Prince Philip gave the royal seal of approval to the new look boring, a market of the future. But many were nostalgic for what had been lost. It was the planners, in their wisdom, that tore the old bullring apart in order to create a concrete jungle, a city without a heart. Our heritage is gone now forever to its memory I always will cling. I shall see all the ghosts of those characters whenever St. Martin's bells ring. Today it's all change again, another new look for another new era.